What it do, do, what it is, what's, what's good, what's, what's poppin'? Poppin'? It's your boy, Warren. It's your boy, Shire. AKA Pretty Peaches. And today on this thing we're about to be reacting to, Blood Rappers versus Crip Rappers versus Black Disciple Rappers. Let's get right into this thing and see what they're talking about, you know? That music and gang culture have always been closely associated. While not every artist in hip-hop is affiliated, the genre is based around street culture, and gangs play a major role in that world. Here's a look at some of the most famous artists who've been affiliated with gangs, from the Bloods, to the Crips, to the Black Disciples. Blood Rappers. Lil Wayne. Dwayne Carter, better known as Lil Wayne, was born in New Orleans, Louisiana on September 27, 1982. He grew up in the Holly Grove area of Uptown, a neighborhood associated with crime and violence. The Bloods were not as common in New Orleans in the 80s and 90s, and growing up, Wayne was associated with local neighborhood crews, more so than the Bloods. But in the early 2000s, after Cash Money signed popular West Coast artist Mac-10, both Wayne and his mentor Birdman started repping the Bloods and carrying around red bandanas. A song on a 2007 mix... Did you hear that? And they just all of a sudden started coming Bloods and started... They was Crips at first. I know. <laughs> I'm like, did they just switch games like that in the middle of... That's what, like, they got on and said they was Bloods. That's crazy. The Drought 3, called I'm Blooded, confirmed his affiliation, and the rapper has made other references to gang culture and songs. I'm mad he you. also famously pulled out a red bandana in a 2016 interview with... You said what? I was about to say, I'm mad because it's just, just some stuff you just don't know. That's crazy. And I never would have known that if I'd never seen this documentary. That's crazy. Got it Mine. In response to questions okay, about Black Lives that Matter, real? as one of the biggest stars in modern hip hop, Lil Wayne most likely isn't still active in the streets. However, he does continue to rep the blood and the culture that he came from, making him one of the most famous artists to do so. YG. Keenan Daquan Jackson, better known as YG, was born in Compton, California on March 9, 1990. YG's father served time in jail for tax fraud when he was young, and he and his family moved all over LA during his childhood. He joined the West Side Treetop Pyro set of the Bloods in 2006 when he was 16. In an interview with DJ Vlad in 2018, YG spoke about his early days gangbanging and rapping at the same time. He talks about dealing with shootouts at some of his early shows and getting locked up for armed robbery at 19. Most of YG's music is inspired by blood culture. Songs like Big and Back, Being Bull, and Twist My Fingers deal directly with common blood practices like throwing up gang signs and replacing C's with B's and words. YG claims that blood culture is central to the identity of his neighborhood in California, and he is simply shedding light on the area he came from and the people he grew up around. Although YG is one of the hottest artists in the game, he is still closely affiliated with the Pyroos. He was arrested on January 28, 2020 on armed robbery charges and held on a $250,000... Imagine the wow. places that... Man, ain't no way. <laughs> ain't no way. He out here. They lie. That's crazy. They gotta be lying. Well, ain't no way. As I said, some of this don't even seem crazy. Together. Yeah. Expedia. See the light. Yeah. Switch to fiber. Frontier fiber optic internet. Woo! Yeah. His home was also raided in July 2019 in connection with the shootout where a police officer was killed. So despite what? all his fame and success, YG has had a difficult time leaving the streets behind. I ain't never heard none of this. And you know I mess with YG, Tay YG is my boy. Tay Moore Trayvon McIntyre was born on June 16, 2000 in Long Beach, California. His father, who was born in Compton, California, was a member of the Baby Insane Crips in Long Beach, and his mother had affiliations with the gang as well. Tay K's father was in jail for most of his youth. His mother moved him and his sister to Las Vegas when he was eight. When his father was released from prison, the family moved once again to Arlington, Texas. Tay K's first album, Santana World, is a reference to his Crip Association. The title refers to Santana Block Compton Crips, one of the oldest Crip gangs in Long Beach, and he is pictured on the cover wearing a blue shirt. His music contains several references to gang culture, and his family ties confirm his association. Tay K's criminal activity has been well documented. In 2016, Tay K was arrested along with six other people for the capital murder of 19 year old Zachary Below. Below I just want to say that boy in jail eating good as hell. For real, because he didn't get big. Super big. That's probably his just his growth spurt from a kid to a grown person, though. Yeah, and you know how, like, he's not smoking, he's not doing anything. Mm -hmm, like, so, yeah. yeah. Man, he probably in there again. They smokes in jail. Yeah. It's allegedly a drug dealer who Tay K and associates plan to rob. The robbery leads to a confrontation during which Belote was killed, and Tay K was later arrested and put on house arrest to await trial. While on house arrest, 
Tay-K cut off his ankle monitor and fled Arlington, Texas to hide out in New Jersey. There he recorded and released The Race, a popular viral hit that made him famous. He was apprehended by U.S. Marshals in New Jersey and brought back to Texas shortly after. Along the run, it's been alleged he was involved in two other crimes. One was an armed robbery of 65-year-old Oni Pete in Arlington, and the other was the murder of 23-year-old Mark Saldivar in San Antonio. In 2019, Tay-K was sentenced to 55 years in jail for the murder of Below and was found guilty by a grand jury of killing no Salvador, who will not be eligible for parole for at least 27 yeah. and a half years. Yeah. He gone. Like, if he would've never cut his ankle, he was gonna dang near beat the first case. They put him on house arrest. That means, like, you had some type of lingo. He felt like they was gonna lock him up, right, cut right, his right. ankle, and call two more bodies. And go, go, like, okay, free Tay-K. Nipsey Hussle. Hermius Joseph Ascadone, aka Nipsey Hussle, was born in the Crenshaw neighborhood of South Central Los Angeles on August 15, 1985. The area he grew up in was known being a hub of crime and violence and his block was the territory of the Rolling Sixties Crips, one of the largest Crip sets in Los Angeles. At age 14, Nipsey left home and joined the gang. In an interview with DJ Vlad, Nipsey claimed the music was his first passion. Frustration with lack of opportunity and ability to make money led him to join the Rolling Sixties as a way to support himself and follow his passion. <coughs> Nipsey's father, who was an African immigrant, took the family on a trip to his homeland of Eritrea when he was 19, a trip that reportedly inspired Nipsey to pursue a life of activism and entrepreneurship and look beyond the streets. Although his association with the Rolling Sixties was never something he turned his back on, he began to use his neighborhood connections and music talent to build a business empire. He spoke openly about gang culture and used Crip themes like repping blue bandanas in his music and video. Nobody can stop him. Six not going to be whatever to be famous. He put his life at risk weekly. I ain't quite think. However, later in his career, he denounced gun violence and many of the negatives associated with gang banging. Yet, despite his community activism and commitment to be a positive force in the neighborhood, Nipsey never fully escaped the streets. On March 31st, 2019, Nipsey Hussle was gunned down outside of Marathon Clothing in South Central, a store the rapper owned. Two days later, a suspect named Eric Holder was arrested. Holder also grew up in the Crenshaw neighborhood and had known Nipsey and his crew for years. It's been alleged by witnesses and those close to the rapper that Holder had been accused of snitching on someone in the neighborhood. Holder came by the store that day, and Nipsey refused to associate with him based on these allegations. Holder, feeling disrespected, went and got a gun and returned to kill the rapper in cold blood. Eric Holder has been charged with one count of murder and two counts of attempted murder for shooting two other witnesses who were standing next to Nipsey at the time. His trial is still ongoing. Black Disciple Rappers Chief Keith Keith Kozart, better known to the world as Chief Keith, was born in the Parkway Gardens That's houses right, in the yeah. south side of Chicago right, yeah. on August 15, 1995. Parkway Gardens, part of a territory known locally as Old Block, is notorious for its association with drugs and crime. The neighborhood is a major hub for the Black Disciples. Chief Keith, who was born to a 15-year-old single mother and was raised by his grandmother, fell in love with the gang from an early age. Keith has had his run-ins with the law since he was a teenager. When he was 15, he was arrested for the manufacture and distribution of heroin and put on house arrest. Later that same year, he was confronted by police with a pistol while leaving his grandmother's apartment complex. He allegedly pointed the gun at officers, but did not shoot. The officers returned fire and missed, but apprehended Keith with a loaded pistol. He was charged with aggravated assault and unlawful use of a weapon for this incident. He was also questioned in connection with the murder of Lil Jojo, a rival rapper who Keith and fellow BD member Lil Reese had been taunting online. Keith was never charged with the crime concerning the killing of Lil Jojo due to lack of evidence, but Lil Jojo's family members insist that Keith had something to do with the killing. Chief Keith has had numerous other run-ins with the law, mainly for violating his parole by carrying weapons or possessing drugs. Today, he lives more under the radar than he did when he first blew up, but his public persona has always revolved around being a figure who doesn't care about the law or the industry, and he has never fully turned his back on that lifestyle. Lil Dirk. Dirk Derek Banks, known as Lil Dirk, was born in the Inglewood area of Chicago, around 64th and Normal Boulevard. This area is not far from the Parkway Gardens houses, where Chief Keith and his associates grew up, and it is considered to be part of the infamous Old Block. Dirk's father was sentenced to life in prison when the rapper was only seven months old. 
Dirk had to take on many adult responsibilities from the time he was young and recalls times growing up when the family was too poor to afford food. Dirk joined the Black Disciples when he was a teenager and was a part of the OTF 300 set that Keith was also in. Dirk has had numerous incidents with the law. In 2011, he was arrested on weapons charges for carrying a handgun with a serial number scratched off and served three months in prison. In 2013, he was arrested for another weapons charge for allegedly throwing a 40 caliber handgun into his car when approached by police. He was held on a $100,000 bond, but later had the charges dropped after nine witnesses testified on behalf of his innocence. In 2015, his tour bus was shot up in Philadelphia before a performance at the Theater of Living Arts, leaving one man dead. Dirk was not arrested or charged with this incident, although the shooting was attributed to gang activity. Despite his criminal past, Dirk has spoken out against gang culture and gun violence. He's made it clear to his fans that while he lived the life he describes in his music, he urges others to find a different path. There's a brief look at the most famous blood rappers, versus crip rappers, versus black disciple rappers. Each of these artists has a different relationship with gang culture. However, it's inspired all of their music, and gangs continue to have major influence in hip hop. Well, that's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give us a thumbs up and let us know in the comments what you'd like to see in the future. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification button so you never miss any great content like this. Catch you in the next video. Y'all go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. Just please tell us what y'all think. Peace. Peace.